Hello friends, in this video I will be discussing about coronal shear injuries of distal humerus. We will be quickly reviewing the basics of these injuries and discuss the plan of management also in a simplified manner. So we will be discussing what the coronal shear injuries are and how do we classify them, what are the surgical approaches that need to be used and what kind of fixation is required and what should be our rehabilitation plan. So what are coronal shear injuries? So any force that is applied on the tangential area of the article surface suppose this is the article fragment and the force is tangential to it like this or even like this or even like this then it will be a shear force and the fracture when occurs in coronal plane for example in humerus the coronal plane will be like this so any fracture that is occurring in coronal plane because of the shear force that is applied tangential to the articular surface or close to the tangential area Will result in coronal shear injuries. For example, suppose the elbow is extended and the direction of force is in axial direction, then automatically there will be stress on the radial head part and radial head part will impact the capillum. On the other hand, the coronoid will impact over the trochlea. That will result in a force which is in line with the direction tangential to the articular surface like this, like I have shown in the arrow and that will result in a coronal shear fracture like this. Again, you can see like this. So the impact on the capillum and trochlea will result in a coronal shear fracture. If there is some valus or valgus component, then the individual fragments, depending upon the side of stress, will get fractured. For example, in case of valgus stress, there will be more force on the lateral side. That will result in radial head fracture and capillum fracture. And on the other side, if there is stress in the varus, that means there will be more stress on the ulnar side. That will result either in coronoid fracture or fracture of the trochlea in coronal pain that means a coronal shear injury and this was the mechanism when the force was axial one what happens when elbow gets dislocated when elbow gets dislocated then there is tendency of the olecranon to recoil back in its original location but sometimes the coronoid gets impacted over the trochlea and because of this impact there will be a force directed in coronal plane like this and this force will result in fracture of the capillum and trochlea. So the radial head will impact over the capillum while the coronoid will impact over the trochlea resulting in a fracture in the radiocapillar region like this. So these were the two mechanisms which result in coronal shear injuries of distal humerus. Now coming to classification. So the most commonly used classification is the Brian Murray classification but it has some flaws that we will be discussing in coming slides. Now in type 1 there is a simple fracture of capitulum which is separated from the lateral condyle. In type 2 again there is a small fragment of capitulum but it is cartilaginous that means there is no subfondal bone attached to this region and it is very difficult to reconstruct it and it may need excision. It is very difficult to repair. Now the type 3. In type 3 there is fracture of capitulum but it is not simple it is combinated so there are multiple fragments of the capitulum. And in type 4 there is fracture of capitulum but along with capitulum there is some part of trochlea attached to it. That means the fragment is a capitulo trochlea fragment while some part of the trochlea that is medial most part is still intact and is attached to the parent bone. Then a better classification the double leg classification again the type 1 is simple fracture of capitulum. Type 2 is fracture of capillum in which there is some part of the trochlea attached to it. So capillo trochlea fragment will be there in type 2. In type 3 there are separate capillo and trochlea fragments. So both these fragments are not in a single block. They have to be addressed separately. And the last part last type 4 in which the fracture is in multiple planes. That means there is a fracture in sagittal plane and there is a fracture in axial plane also. So the trochlea is actually separated into two pieces anterior and posterior so while the same occurs for the capillum it is fractured in two pieces anterior and posterior and they can be combination also like trochlea has two fragments while capillum has single fragment only criteria for type 4 is that the fracture lines are passing in multiple planes not in a single plane like here and there are some modifiers a and b a is there when the fracture is simple that means like two part three part four part without combination and type B is there when there is associated posterior combination. The management differs in these types of fracture because simple fractures can be fixed with simple implants like screws and sometimes KYS also but the combination ones require some fixed angle construct like locking plates. So therefore it is a good classification which tells most of the things. 
Now coming to the radiology. After clinical evaluation of the patient, the radiographs are the usual investigations which need to be ordered. But the radiograph will not be able to tell you about the complete picture. Right? Suppose you in this radiograph you are able to see that there is fracture of capillary trochlear fragment. Along with this, there is aversion of the lateral condyle also. But you are not able to confirm what are the planes of the fracture. That means is it a multiple fragmentary or single fragment with without any additional fracture line. So you are not able to delineate what are the exact fracture lines. You can definitely confirm that th this is a fracture in the capillary trochlear area but you will not be able to confirm what are the fracture lines and it is very important for the surgical management. Therefore CT is must. In CT you will be able to see what are the primary and secondary fracture lines. For example, if you see trochlea here, you see trochlea is actually fragmented in multiple planes. This is a sagittal cut. You see olecranon is articulating with the trochlea and trochlea is segmented. One fragment number one, fragment, fragment number two and fragment number three. So there are three fragments. You see capillum is fractured. The good thing is that it is a one big block. It is migrated proximally but there is posterior combination that was not evident in the radiograph. In this part, the coronal cut, you see that posterior most part of the trochlea is still in continuity with the parent bone. That means it is not a separate fragment. It is actually attached to the proximal fragment. Only these two fragments have separated from the proximal fragment. As we go more anteriorly, we will be able to see it more clearly. See, this was a fragment which was here. It is still attached to the parent bone, but this is the fragment which is completely broken. It includes capillum and trochlea and trochlea has two fracture planes here and here. Now even after this, even these cuts might not give you good information for surgical management. You need to get orientation of every fragment clearly in your mind. So therefore the 3D reconstruction is always required in these cases. Now see 3D will give, give you much better picture. You see there is big block of capillum which is attached to the trochlea and there is a fracture line between this block and the remaining part of the trochlea and there is a fracture line here in the posterior fragment of trochlea which was actually attached to the parent bone that means it is not separate so we'll need to fix this and we will need to fix this while addressing the combination also and this was a secondary second fracture line i've told you here you see this was a fracture line in 3d cut you are able to see and this part posterior part is intact it is attached to the it is attached to the parent bone and there is a secondary fracture line here which is not visible here because it is more inwards we can see here probably this was a red fracture line which is going here in the posterior part we will be able to see that there is combination in the posterior part uh, along with lateral condylar ligamentous aversion and this is the anterior most part see again there is a block of capillum there is a fragment of trochlea and there is one more fragment of trochlea which is just behind it and then there is last fragment of trochlea which is attached to the medial epicondyle this was intact so we need to fix this whole segment to the intact part and fix this whole segment to the lateral part and while maintaining articular reduction in this area also it means junction of capillum and trochlea but again you need a better picture so digital subtraction of the proximal forearm from the humerus can give you a much better picture see we have subtracted the olecranon and radius from this ct cut now we'll be able to see the good picture see there is a large capital trochlear fragment and there is a small trochlear fragment here and probably a small fragment lying here See, this part is still intact. That means the fracture line is passing here, till here, till here, and till here. So the 3D reconstruction with digital subtraction of the of the non-required bones can give you much better picture. Now coming to surgical planning. Now we have identified the surgical fragments. We have also examined the combination. And we have also seen what are the simple fracture patterns. And now we have to decide about the approach. So lateral approach, which is Cocker's or Kaplan, is sufficient for the capillary fractures. So these fractures can be addressed with the lateral approach in which there is interval between the extensor origin and the anconius. And just beneath the anconius, there will be lateral ulnar collateral ligament, which needs to be protected. If it is erased from the origin side, then it needs to be repaired also. So lateral approach is required for isolated capillary fractures. And sometimes when there is small part of the trochlea, that is lateral most attached to the capillum, but only when, when it is a simple one, not comminuted. Now extended elbow or anterior approach to elbow or combined medial lateral approaches are required when then you need to visualize this part also because good reduction, anatomical reduction is required in this part also. By extending the caucus or Kaplan's approach, we may be able to visualize this by subluxating the humerus laterally. So we may we will be able to address this component also. And anterior approach can also be used but has complications related to scarring of the elbow crease region which can result in contractures. So better to avoid. It needs extensive dissection, so better to go through Kaplan approach or extended 
Cocker's approach and the medial approach is required when this fragment is also fractured and for that a better visualization is required which might not be possible from the lateral side so it's better to go through medial window also. Now the posterior approach which can be triceps sparing or auricular osteotomy. So when there are fractures in multiple planes which are involving both capillum and trochlea then we need approach which will give us an extensive exposure both anteriorly and posteriorly. So if the fragments are a more simple one then we can use triceps sparing approach by creating a window laterally and medially. We can rotate the arm medially or laterally to visualize the trochlea and to visualize the capillum. So triceps sparing approach can be used in those cases. But oligran osteotomy approach is required when the fragments are hidden beneath the oligran. So if there are multiple fragments in this area that we need oligran osteotomy. But if there are two fragments, large fragments, one here, one here, then triceps sparing approach can be used because we will be able to visualize this fragment and we will be able to visualize this fragment. So indirectly this whole part can be reduced if the fracture is simple one. So this is the standard lateral approach in which you will be creating interval between the common extensor origin muscles and the anconius. And just beneath the anconius are these fibers of lateral ulnar collateral ligament. You will be able to visualize the radial head and capillum by this. But be careful since that portion of elbow is flexed you will not be able to visualize the fracture unless you extend the elbow. See. This was a fragment and it will be visualized only once you have extended the elbow. See this is the fracture line, it is going vertically over here like this. And then you have to reduce this fragment using a clamp or k-wire or joystick back to its original position and secure with multiple k-wires like this. See we have put a screw, we have reduced it, we have put a screw and this second guide wire is for the placement of screw. Once you have fixed the fracture then be careful that lateral ligament is complex needs to be repaired. Check for the stress views also because sometimes the lateral ligament is complex repair might not be stable enough to keep the elbow stable in that case you need suture anchors or trans osseous drilling tracks for repair of the lateral ligament is complex so the triceps sparing approach can be used if there is a simple fragment here and simple fragment on the capital side we can fix the medial side using the medial window on the medial side of the triceps and we can use the lateral window on the lateral side of the triceps to repair the lateral side fragments but the problem occurs when fragments are multiple and lie in this area which is hidden beneath the oligon in such a state we will need to perform an oligon osteotomy like here we have performed the oligon osteotomy now we are able to better visualize the fragment although we have reduced them in this picture using multiple k wires and we have put a screw also which is not visible here so we are able to better visualize the this part of humerus when oligon osteotomy is performed you can use a periosteal elevator or any blunt instrument anterior to the distal humerus to get a better view of this anterior part also but be careful whenever you are exposing the elbow joint take some sutures through the capsule because we have to repair the capsule back and sometimes the capsule has some ligamentous component also for example if you see here this part the part which we have lifted from the medial precondylar region contains the posterior medial collateral ligament and it needs to be repaired back to its original position. Now coming to fixation. Now I have told you if the fracture is simple one, there are multiple options for screw placement like Herbert screws, headless cancel screws, cancel screws can be used with countersink and the locking screws can also be used and they can be buried on, inside the cartilage. But if the fragment is involving more, if the fragment is involving major part of the metaphysis then we need plates also. Large profile plates are required when there is fracture fragment which is extending more proximally in the metaphysical region. Small hand plates can be used in fractures in which the fracture components are very small and these large screws might not be able to secure those fragments. We will be seeing in coming slides. So for example, you see this is a fracture pattern, again a multiple fragmentary fracture pattern, the double A type 4 fracture, fracture pattern in which there are multiple fracture planes and involving both capillum and trochlea. So we have addressed the trochlea part, trochlea is a small fragment using a plate which is extra articular and small plate. We have put multiple screws to gain purchase inside this fragment only after we have reduced it completely. And we have put multiple screws in capillary trochlear fragment also in posterior entry direction. This hole is for a screw. So we have secured these fragments using multiple screws. So basic purpose is to make the construct stable. If there are multiple fragments, go for simple fixation like screws. And in addition to that, augment your fixation with locking plates. And whenever possible, if the fragment is large, like here you can see the capillary fragment. This part is the lateral part, this part is the medial part. So the, on, and this part we are seeing anteriorly. So this is capillum. Capillum is a big block. So we have secured the capillum using a bigger plate which is having multiple screws from posterior to anterior direction. And to add stability we have added countersunk screws also which are not visible here because we have countersunk them inside the cartilage. And this small plate is used for trochlea. A medial plate is also used to augment this fixation. 
because we have passed some screws from the radio side till here. Now see, this lateral part, lateral plate is addressing this fragment and this medial plate is addressing this fragment and these multiple screws. Now as far as the screw position in capillum is concerned, again I've told you when the fracture is simple one, we can use the screws, simple screws, headless cancer screws are a good option. But if there is posterior combination, there is need for a locking concept. We can use a posterior lateral plate which has multiple screw options and those screws can be started from posterior to anterior direction to add stability to the concept. Suppose even then we are not satisfied with our concept and we have some apprehension that this part because of combination may still fail. We can add additional plate to neutralize the forces because the forces are in this direction. So to augment fixation we can use an anti-glide plate, a small profile plate on this area. But be careful whenever you are plating this area, terminal part of the plate should be just flush with the fracture side. So the screw should be somewhere here. It should not come here because otherwise it will hit the radial head in terminal flexion. So it is very important only small part of the plate should be proud in the terminal part only. So this plate will act like an anti glide plate. As far as rehabilitation protocol is concerned, in these fractures any passive motion can result in forces put undue stress on the article surface. So the best way to get movement is to start active movements only. So for 3 to 6 weeks we have to start active motion only. Depending on the repair, we need to use a hinged arrow embrace. The hinged RM brace will prevent any constraints on medial or lateral side that can put undue force on the repair of the fracture fragments. Early motion is very much required because otherwise it will result in elbow stiffness while an undue stress on the elbow joint can result in loss of reduction. So passive motion should not be started in initial 3 to 6 weeks. Only active motion should be stressed upon. Thank you.